very much for coming by this afternoon. Um, Orania Resources Lost Cities project is founded on the search for two historic gold mines that were mined for about 35 years from the mid 1500s to about 1600. And in our search for those two old gold mines, we've taken up a large property position and we've just done basic exploration that is designed to pick up any other kind of deposit that might be in that land package. And so in giving this overview of the company, I will be making forward-looking statements as we go through that description, not only of the historic, um, the search for the historic mines, but also the other exploration results that we've had. Now, Ecuador has been left in the dust a little bit in some of the exploration that there's, there's been over the last couple of decades. And there was, it's, it's perceived to be a gap in the Andean chain. And that just illustrates the Andes on the left-hand side of that diagram with a whole bunch of deposits strung out along the Andes and a gap over Ecuador. But the crucial thing is that exploration over the last couple of years particularly has started to fill in that gap. It's showing that it isn't actually a fundamental gap, that there are deposits in there and there's lots to be found. And crucially, Ecuador has recognized the importance of mining to bring in revenue that the country needs. They're being fiscally responsible, they're in a debt situation, and they're trying to get out of it, and they identify mining as one of those key industries that's gonna get them out of that debt. And crucially, in the last six months, Ecuador's two new modern mines have come into production. The open pit, the first open pit copper mine in Ecuador, in Mirador, and Lundin's opening of the Fruta del Norte uh, gold deposit that our chairman was, uh, current chairman was involved in the discovery of. Now, going back to the historical work, um, Keith, our chairman, has spent over a decade looking at, at uh, through various archives. And there is a huge amount of documentation of these two gold mines called Logroño and Sevilla. And they were in operation between 1564 and around about 1600. So this map on the left-hand side that's dated from 1574 was 10 years after the start of production from Logroño. So this map was drawn right in the heyday of production of gold from that deposit. And Logroño and Sevilla are located on this map between two very prominent geographical features. The Opano River on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, or the east, is the last mountain chain of the Andes before getting into the vast expanse of the flatlands of the Amazon Basin. So the middle diagram is, is the satellite image of that area today. And Keith went in and applied for a concession block of 200,000 hectares between those same geographic um, features to cover where he thought Logroño and Sevilla were likely to be. And that is in southeastern Ecuador. That 200,000 hectare concession block is in the red shape on the, on, on the top right of that graphic. But the important thing is that it's located, although it was taken up on historic grounds, it lies on trend of those purple rocks that trend up from the south. And both of those new mines in Ecuador that I was talking about, um, the Fruta del Norte and Mirador, the two, two modern mines that have been brought, in, brought, brought into production in, in Ecuador are in that trend that we lie um, along, along strike of. And that trend holds 26 million ounces of uh, 43,101 gold and over 30 billion pounds of copper. So it, it's a good trend to be in. Now, in exploring that area, 
we have generated a bunch of other targets, then our exploration results fall into basically five different silos. There's the historic work that's ongoing at the moment, and that's looking directly for those two Spanish mines of Logroño and Sevilla. And at the same time, we're looking for epithermal gold, which would be the same kind of gold that Fruta del Norte is, and significantly, we've stumbled across copper two types of copper, and then there's also silver lead zinc. And I'm going to start off by talking just very briefly about the historic stuff. Logroño and Sevilla were reported in the old Spanish literature to, be, to have been joined by a road that ran sort of north-south parallel to the Cordillera. And just in December, our guys identified a two and a half kilometer segment of a road that can only have been part of that Spanish road. And now we're working on finding the extensions of, of that road, and that work is, is ongoing. But what we expect is that road linked those two old, uh, those two old mines. Talking about the second silo, the, the so-called epithermal gold, of which Fruta del Norte is a prime example. This is a vertical slice through a, a typical epithermal system. And we're talking about an old land surface that was formed at the time that these deposits were formed, about 150 million years ago. And that old land surface has sinters, um, sort of Yellowstone National Park, kind of accumulations on it. And those are recorded in the, in the geological record. And we are seeing those kinds of, of indications of epithermals. And that's what we're drilling at the moment in our epithermal targeting. But what this diagram illustrates, and this vertical slice, is that there's normally, normally a gap where there's no gold between those rocks that are formed on the surface and the actual gold bearing zone. And for the Spanish to have been able to find Logroño and Sevilla, with just by panning, presumably, they, the erosion level would have had to have been down in that red zone, which is the gold zone, which is usually a couple of hundred meters below surface. So we know that from the work that we are doing, where we're right at the top in those blue rocks, and that's where we're drilling, and combining that with the fact that the Spanish found Logroño and Sevilla, we know that there are the erosion level in this mountain, mountainous region cuts all the way through that system from the very top right down to the deposit level. And that provides us with a phenomenal opportunity because we have technology to recognize those mineralized veins that the Spanish didn't have, recognize them at a level where the gold is below the erosion level. So we would be able in that blue zone of the pathfinder elements to be able to home in on those uh, targets and, and drill them. And that's exactly what we're doing with the, uh, with the epithermal gold. The third silo is the sedimentary copper. And all I'm going to say about this is that it was not expected. This is crucially important because the prime examples of this kind of deposit around the world are the Kupferschiefer and the Central African Copper Belt. The Central African Copper Belt had 400 billion pounds of copper in it, equivalent to all of Chile's uh, production. And we're finding evidence of this kind of deposit. In addition to that, and we've got the, the same sort of profile with those red rocks with the copper developing over the top of them, we've got these granitic porphyries pushing into that and they carry their own copper and they are a target in their own right. So coming back to this original diagram, where we stand at the moment is a situation where we've got our first physical lead on where those two Spanish gold mines were. We found this section of road and we're busy following that road. So there's going to be news on those two so-called lost cities, which were just old mines. But all the rest of these categories, the copper and the gold, we're drilling on the epithermal, epithermal gold now, and we'll keep drilling throughout the year. And we will start drilling on the sedimentary copper and the porphyry copper. And in fact, there's a silver lead zinc 
uh, mineralization zone that we've also identified that I haven't talked about, that, but that's drill ready as well. So the company is at a situation where we will be drilling on all of these targets except for the Spanish gold. So this is a year for discovery within this company. And this is in a company that's got a, slight, uh, a, a tight share structure, 41 million shares outstanding, uh, or fully diluted, I should say. And the share structure is pretty interesting because over half of the shares are held by management and the board. So your management and the board are absolutely aligned with every shareholder in the company. Thank you very much.